what you need to know about general vendor service agreements contractors construction companies and other businesses that do work on a regular basis often need you know vendor service agreements uh, these agreements help keep your business relationship stable and predictable by outlining what you can expect from the other party in terms of service payments and more now this is gonna be something that's incredibly important oh hold on I completely forgot that I had coffee warming I probably should have waited until it was done before I even started this but anyways um, yeah so like whenever you're doing contract work you want to make sure that you have an agreement set in place just in case anything happens uh, you know it, some people are like well you don't need it it's not gonna be that it's not gonna be that much but you know and just in case something happens nobody's gonna be left out in the dark God forbid you know something legal happens you need to go to court you have these documents to back it up I always say for you know just you know independent contractors to make sure that you do uh, have this when you are working with a you know working with a company and providing your services for a company because you like I said never know what can happen god forbid something happens somebody wasn't paid and somebody has to go to court god forbid it's simply better to be protected than to not not have anything at all it's better to uh know that if something happens in court that you have the you have the upper hand because you have this agreement in place with this um with this uh, supplier or with this uh, you know, client, uh, I was I watched something a long time ago uh, where it was somebody had provided um, a design for this business. Uh, it was a um, a YouTuber and they had gotten a hold of somebody to do some logo work for them, right? And in that, uh, they came right back around. And said oh well this is my design and I didn't give you permission to do that and, and you know all, all of this this that and the other it's, it's also good for businesses just in case you know the independent contractor or you know the person who you're hiring you do contract work for comes right back around and said oh well actually I didn't give you permission because this is one of my intellectual properties and this was part of this thing don't do it <laughs> listen it is so much easier to get a gender uh, general vendor service agreement instead you just, just it eliminates so much of the frustration so they can't come back and say well this was this and this was this and this is this and this is my intellectual button this is and like, no, 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 no. let's look at the agreement right here if this lays out what happens to uh, what happens in the event of this what happens to, who's pro who's what who property is what after you get done creating it, it says it's my property, so I get to use it. Or, you know, say you did work for a company, but they decide to use some software that w wasn't available to the general, I don't know, something, a uh, software that wasn't available to the general public, or they just did something that uh, you gave them advice on, but you didn't want everybody else knowing because it was a trade secret or something. Um, you can use one of these contracts to say, okay, hey, um, stated right here, it states that you cannot use this because as we have per in our agreement, um, it stated right here that, you know, this particular, this thing in particular is my intellectual property that vice versa businesses to, uh, you have a contractor that doesn't work for you and, uh, they're exposed to a lot of uh, trade secrets and you know stuff like that you can easily get one of these and say okay so you will not take these uh, secrets and use them anywhere else or you won't take these designs that you make for us anywhere else you know, all of that it's better to have that than to have no contract at all you do not want to go into business do contract work for somebody just to get sued because uh, there was a disagreement on what what was what and what could be used. So 
uh, what kind of companies uh, you your signed general vendor service agreement and like I said it's any company that wants to be covered anyone that uses a um, that uses an independent contractor or vice versa anybody who uses a third party like a accountant or lawyer is good for that too uh, anybody that you're hiring outside of your company to do some just some general work for you um, that's that's what that's what it's used for uh, what so what do these agreements say they go over a whole lot of things like pricing pricing how you'll get paid uh, what happens when you leave what happens in the event that somebody gets terminated what happens if the services are no longer needed how much notice you give them um, it's just a whole a whole lot of things it goes over so many important vital things that you want to have laid out before you do any sort of work for anybody of course, payment terms. It defines, you know, uh, when somebody gets paid, how much time you have to be paid. So, like, if you're an independent contractor, you can say to the company, "You have this the, this many days to pay us." And that's another reason why, when I do loan signatures, I don't like um, or loan or real estate. I know some uh, notary publics have gotten used to getting paid from companies like. Uh, a month after they perform the services and for me that's that's not it if you want a service done then you're gonna pay up front it doesn't matter what what it is um, if it's a loan if it's um, general notary work if it's you know working for like a huge corporation everybody pays up front so um, I won't be waiting a month for because companies uh, are instantaneous they can print out a, they can print out a check like that so if I'm working for a business I will let them know that before I perform any services for you you will have to pay up front just like everybody else <laughs> I know some you can get it if, if not that's fine you can get a notary public that will wait a month to get paid but for me personally for my for my company this these are the terms of our payment this is for this service that I provide um, it's going to it's going to require payment up front and I feel like uh, that's also a better better on everybody because they don't have to worry about invoicing or that you never have to worry about invoicing never have to worry about invoicing so you don't have to worry about whether I paid this invoice was this person paid um, and heaven forbid that you have to send out a demand letter to get your money and that's one of the, one of the things that I don't like to do for due to customers or, or clients or anything like that I don't like demand letters so I'd rather you pay up front and have no, no tangles, n none of that. You know, we, you, we, we pay and that's that. And nobody goes through uh, any turmoil. We don't have a whole, we don't make we don't make a whole situation. So yeah, so payment terms, of course, uh, when you get paid, and you know they can vary between you know month to month, year to year. You pay same day. When when is the what are the payment terms? Also, the intellectual property rights, who keeps what, you know, these are rights to establish uh, an individual or company to use an idea in a way that's uh, protected, you know, these can include patents, copyrights, and trademarks, you know, um, who gets them, it's basically who gets it at the end of the work, like after all of the work, after all of the dust is settled, uh, after everything is done, who gets what and who has legal rights to these properties. Um, so, uh, you know, after you're done doing work for somebody or somebody who's doing work for you, um, who, at the end of the day, who does this belong to? Like, if we took it to court, who would it belong to? If we use this in a commercial, if we use this on our website, if we use this anywhere, um, who has the legal rights to this? And that's a huge thing. I cannot stress this enough. If you're doing logos or this, huge. If you're doing any sort of design, say you're designing a, uh, a makeup box, huge. Who has legal rights to this? Make sure that you have legal rights to it to avoid any hullabaloo. Um, so yeah. Of course, we also have limitation of liability. Um, and this is another thing, um, who's, uh, who's, um, who's responsible for what damages, um, by, caused by, uh, products or services. Of course, this is a very common thing to put in contracts. 
Um, it's important to understand how this works so you can protect yourself from unnecessary risks, of course. Um, it all, all depends on what business it is. Sometimes they're not always necessary. However, if you're selling something with like a potential risk, then it's always an important thing to add in. Of course, if you're working with medicine, any sort of medical devices and stuff like that, this is non-negotiable. <laughs> non-negotiable. You have to put in who's responsible if something goes wrong. Who is responsible? Um, if you're working for something that involves, I would say, like a lot of um, customer involvement, that's uh, something that, uh, like, it's something that's e this high risk that could go that could go horribly wrong in a snap. You're gonna want that. You're gonna want that, um, especially like if you're the contractor. You're gonna want that. Like, if you're doing work for a pharmaceutical company. You're going to want that. I don't know. Maybe you're doing a chemistry equation for them, and you're like, okay, I'll solve your problem. And this is how this is done. And they take it. They develop it, and they have the medicine. And then they, the people take it, and based and they and they and they get sick or something. And it's like, oh well, this was based off of your finding. I was like, no. As you can see in our contract, I'm not liable for that. So this is a huge thing to have, huge. Uh, also termination and survival. Um, so uh, uh, of course it provides that a vendor may terminate their agreement with you at any time upon written notice uh, to you or legal counsel. Uh, you must also be given 30 days in writing. Um, it, it's just things uh, to know uh, when going about the termination process. Um, what happens during termination, after termination, who gets to keep what after termination, what work still needs to be completed after termination, uh, termination, 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 um, and the rules around that, um, are they still required to pay, or like, what, 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 what are the rules around termination, basically? So, what, how do I, what if I need help determining whether my company has signed, you know, a vendor, a general vendor service agreement? So, if you're unsure about whether your company has signed a general service agreement, you know, it's always best to check with your legal department. Of course, they're always going to have those. Um, they can help you determine whether or not there was an agreement in place by by a third party or you were a third party by re reviewing records and documents, of course. You can also ask your IT department um, if they know of any agreements uh, with any vendors, depending on you know if you work in software or something like that. Um, and you can, or you can ask um, to ask questions directly to the finance department because they're going to be the ones who are paying the vendors. So, you know, they'll be like, oh, I don't remember us having any contracts with this company. We're not going to be paying. So we don't have any obligations to pay them. So they're also going to know whether or not you have um, agreements in place. Um, but yeah, I would say that this is one of, the, one of the more important documents that you definitely need to have if you're doing contract work or if you're um, getting uh, contractors for a job. Um, this is going to be one of those documents that's it's going to be very important. And if you need one of those documents done, uh, we have lawyers that will create them for you, of course, professionally at an amazing price. So you can always go to Quan's U.S. Notary and we'll have that for you. Uh, you can always text us, ask us, and we'll be able to provide all of that information for you. We'll be happy to help. In conclusion, of course, um, I hope you have more information, uh, more information about the uh, general vendor service agreement. Um, so if you have any, of course, any additional uh, questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach out to us or put, you know, down below, of course, and we'll get to you. So thank you. Good day.